Hello everyone, welcome back to Sonnet Institute of Technology. My name is Bruce Malawiti and I'm so excited to be your instructor today. Today we're talking about SVI which stands for Search Virtual Interface. This particular topic is aimed at as associate network engineers who are busy preparing for their CCNA routing and switching exam. As we all know that layer 2 switches do not understand the internet protocol but we can assign virtual interfaces with an IP address for remote access or remote management. Layer 3 switches understand the internet protocol better than layer 2 switches. Therefore, we're not going to talk about layer 3 switches. Let's jump into the uh, lab exercise. In this lab exercise, the SVI lab exercise, the minimum requirement is one layer 2 switch, which is the Cisco switch running version 12.4 and above, and you need one PC. In this objective, we our main objective is to configure SVI on a layer 2 switch, and we need to make sure that we have full connectivity. These are the steps that we will take. First of all, we define a virtual interface. We'll then assign an IP address and then we'll assign the default gateway. In step 4, we'll configure the switch for Telnet or SSH access. However, if you don't understand step 4, please refer to the video CCNA SSH, which gives you better understanding on how to configure SSH on a Cisco router or switch. Let's dive into the configurations. Here we are in GNS3 uh, topology. We have a happy network and on, our, on my left hand side it's data center. The data center belongs to the 192.168.15.0 uh, slash 24 network. Then we've got the uh, data center switch and we've got the two management stations. That is you and me working in a data center as associate network engineers. The default gateway of the data center is 192.168.15.1. This router which divides these two networks is the host name of router 1. So on my right hand side, it's a different network that is uh, belongs to the subnet 172.16.1.0 24. This network belongs to the office and the six users, all the users are happy, they are all connected to the central switch which is office switch. And the users are co connected right now and we can test for general connectivity. So from the, I can check uh, what is username, uh, the, the, user, the user IPs. But in this configuration, user 1 is using a dot 11, user 2 has got a dot 12 IP, user 3 has got a dot 13, so we can just double check. We can just double check. So user 2, what's your IP? User 2, so I'll do show IP. So user 2 has got a dot 12, uh, user 16. What's your IP? So that will be show IP. User 6 has got a dot 16 IP. Default gateway is that. Now, from the management station, that's me and you working in a data center. Can I ping one of the users here yeah, to make sure that we have full connectivity here? So here yeah, I am. And I will send four packets to user number let's say number four sorry number four is using dot 14 okay uh, so I do have ping reply which means I have full connectivity um, you might be wondering why am I using so many devices for this particular exercise uh, this particular exercise as I said earlier on you just need one PC and a switch but for this matter, I just wanted to understand, to make you understand why do you need an SVI. So imagine that's you and me working in a data center. That's me and you working in a data center. 
these are the users connected to the central switch every time there are issues on the switch a call gets logged to us as the engineers to come and fix the switch so what we normally do me and you we carry our laptop we walk across the building a couple of blocks to the office plug into the uh, console direct and we do the configuration we do the work get done and then we go back to the office in the data center however we could have minimized the up and down we've been moving around up and down by by configuring an SVI so every time the office calls us that there's an issue on the switch we just have to remote access to the switch so what I'll do right now I will demonstrate using our local switch which is the DC switch so we'll start configuring from there and then if this switch works as intended and then we can jump over to the office switch so this is where we will do our configuration so we are on the Cisco switch we need to do a bit of configurations so we need to get into configure global configuration mode that is ConfT. the first thing let's define the uh, virtual interface that will be interface VLAN you can call it interface VLAN 1 so we are in the interface mode then we can assign an IP we can give it an IP of 2 on this uh, slash 24 subnet that will be 255.255.255.0 enter then I can bring the interface up by giving it the command no shut down at this moment I can exit to back to global configuration mode and I have to define the username and the password that will be username uh, Bruce the password is rated uh, at this moment I can use the keyword secret so secret is better than password secret actually uh, hashes the password value but password the keyword password does not uh, hide that password so it doesn't matter anyway for this uh, purpose of demonstration so username bruce password rated then i need to enable the privilege mode that is enable then i can say secret if i want to or password so let me use secret this time my secret is red hat and then the next thing is to define the domain name so that will be IP domain name so the DC switch that will be the data center switch dot sonnet dot co dot ct the domain name you can assign any domain name uh, for the purpose of this demonstration press enter then I need to define the VTY lines that will be line VTY 0 to 4 and the password will be I'll use red Dead again then I need my login to be local because I'm not using a remote um, AAA server or Radia server or Taka server. So remote login, local. So to use the local database. The next thing I need to do is to define the uh, transport input. Uh, the switch can accept Telnet sessions or SSH sessions. Please bear in mind that Telnet is not secure, but SSH is secure. So the keyword is transport transport input I can say all so that we accept uh, both telnet and SSH then I can exit back to the uh, global configuration mode the next thing is to create the digital certificate for use to be used by SSH so the command is crypto Key generate 
RSA, General Keys, Modulus. So let's use uh, a modulus of 1024. Okay, the key has been generated as you can see. The next thing we need to do is uh, enable and then we can save our configuration. So we can say write to memory, which is WR. So we can exit from here, exit from the switch. And the first thing we need to do is from the management station, uh, let's check for general connectivity. So can I ping that switch IP that is the dot two? So I'm sending four packets, that is minus C, means count four. So the IP is 192.168.15.2. So I have connectivity. The switch is responding back. So can I tell net to the switch? That will be tell net um, the IP address. That will be 192.168.15.2. Okay. So I'm being requested for username. The username is Bruce. The password is rated. So I'm successfully connected to a switch as you can see. Can I escalate my privilege by doing enable? Yes, I should be. Enable the password. Enter my secret password. Yes, I'm enabled. Can I see which interfaces are up? That will be show IP interface brief. As you can see, I'm fully connected to a switch and I can do um, administration, configuration, whatever you may name it. And as you can see, I've got an IP here on villain one. So let me exit from here. Exit, clear the screen. And can I SSH to the switch? So that will be SSH, uh, the username is Bruce at the IP address of the switch that would be 192.168.15.2 we are presented with a message so we just have to accept the connection so I'll type in yes the password we defined was red head here we go I am fully connected to the switch through SSH I can escalate my privilege by typing in enable and my password was red hat so I have full privilege here I can do show IP interface brief yes we are fully connected so I can exit from here the connection is closed and then I can exit from here as well so we have successfully uh, configured an SVI on the uh, data center switch. So the same process and the same configuration, the same procedure can be applied to the office switch. So every time the office switch breaks, we don't have to carry our laptops and walk across the building like a bunch of fools. We just have to remote uh, start a remote session from the data center itself to the switch unless if the switch is totally uh, malfunction or it's broken it's, it's not coming up or something like that but as long we can uh, get remote access we can work uh, from the data center without going moving up and down up and down and at times the 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 the, the, the switch might be located on a on a on a geographical um, a long distance you may be from one city to the other so svi comes to the rescue to summarize this um i walked through and explained to you what an svi is and how it actually helps you and me as network engineers um, switches can be configured remotely and svi was the solution to this so in this demonstration I showed you that we can configure an SVI on, on data center uh, switch the same procedure can be applied to that switch which is the office switch 
the same procedure can be applied to a remote switch on a on a different uh, 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 geographical location so this is handy and you will love this i would like to thank you for watching and i hope this has been informative goodbye for now